These two engines may appear distinct, but they share a common characteristic, their creators classify them as single cycle engines. As a mechanical engineer, this concept intrigues and makes me skeptical. What does single cycle mean? Is it an innovation akin to an unknown rotary engine or merely an exaggerated marketing strategy? Let's uncover the reality behind the functioning of a single cycle engine, its unique capabilities that set it apart from conventional engines, and, crucially, why someone would invest millions of dollars in developing an internal combustion engine, given the imminent transition to electric vehicles. The revelation promises to be surprising. Let's explore these questions together. Single cycle engines, an analysis. Why is the idea of a single cycle engine seen as peculiar? A single cycle engine is a form of internal combustion engine. It operates by burning fuel within a chamber and converting that energy into rotation. There are various ways to achieve this, but the essential aspect is that the engine functions in a continuous cycle. In other words, it needs to burn a portion of fuel, transform it into motion, and then prepare to burn more fuel again. For this process to be viable, first stages are crucial, intake of air and fuel, compression of the mixture, power generation through combustion, and finally, expulsion of exhaust gases. Thus, we have intake, compression, power, and exhaust. In common gasoline cars, these four phases occur in distinct piston movements, known as cycles. These are known as four-stroke engines, being the most widely used. In some types of motorcycles and smaller engines, such as lawnmowers or leaf blowers, the intake and compression phases occur in the same movement, and the power and exhaust phases in the subsequent one. This characterizes a two-stroke engine. So, a single cycle engine would combine all these four stages, intake, compression, power, and exhaust, into a single piston cycle. Now, let's think about how a single cycle engine would compare. Imagine a cycle where a swimmer can generate thrust and move forward while readjusting to advance again. This vision is somewhat complex, but using swimming as an analogy can clarify why such a cycle is intriguing. However, it is fair to give the inventors the benefit of the doubt and examine the engines they have developed, starting with the so-called an engine. Innovations in Engines, an overview. An engine is a company based in Granada, Spain, dedicated to developing innovative engine technologies for various applications. This organization is relatively modest in size, with a team of only nine people. It was established in 2011 by a group consisting of Fernando Castanas, Roberto Lero, Ana Martín Moreno, who serves as the administrative director, and Juan Ghetto, the investor and CTO of the company. The available information about the team members is limited. For example, Juan Garrido does not have a detailed LinkedIn profile, leaving his qualifications as an engineer uncertain. Roberto Landaro, the vice president, apparently does not have a background in mechanical engineering or experience in the automotive industry. His 23-year career is focused on managing custom seating projects, such as for large events, suggesting that he is probably more business-oriented. The standout member of the group is Angel Herrero, an engineer specializing in simulation analysis working at an engine. The company is relatively young but has been operating for 13 years, during which it has developed two main products, the AirX engine and the Rex B. These are described as revolutionary single-cycle engines, patented due to a notable feature. Their innovative design of opposed pistons allows the pistons to move in balance, canceling out the forces between them in three distinct planes. A technical peculiarity is that the piston's movement is controlled by the shape of the cam track, not by levers or a crankshaft. This eliminates secondary imbalance, common in many engines that tend to vibrate when operated at high revolutions per minute. The result is what could be the smoothest internal combustion engine ever seen. As a curiosity, the inventor took the Rex engine for a test at the University of Valencia, one of the most sophisticated thermal engine test benches in Spain. He shared that the test recordings were so silent that investors doubted the engine was running, thinking the video was a montage. 
this highlights how impressive the engine's operation is. However, a question remains, is it really a single cycle engine? To investigate, I analyzed slow motion videos of the engine. Focusing on a cylinder with two pistons, I observed the power phase, where sparks are fired, and the gas is ignited. As the pistons move outward, reaching full expansion, they pass the exhaust port, and the gases are released. Simultaneously, the exhaust phase occurs, still during the power phase. According to an engineer, the exhaust gases exit so quickly that they create a vacuum inside the chamber, drawing in ambient pressure air when the piston reveals the intake port. This is intriguing. The idea that the fleeting exhaust air generates a vacuum so powerful as to completely absorb the air needed for the next compression cycle is, at first, questionable. However, after further analysis, it seems plausible. Following the intake of fresh air, fuel is directly injected into the chamber, mixing with the air as the pistons move back towards each other, compressing the mixture. Once compressed, the mixture is ignited again by the spark plug, restarting the cycle. This process, although simple, is considered quite innovative. But wait a minute, the intake and compression occur after the power stroke when the pistons are returning. This is the second stroke. If this sounds familiar, it is because it really is. It is a typical two-stroke cycle, not just one. So, why does a company insist on calling this a single-stroke engine? Understanding two-stroke engines. It deeply bothers me when companies make exaggerated claims like this without meeting expectations, especially when there is no need. Therefore, I decided to investigate, and to be fair, an engineer admitted, when responding to a message on YouTube, that if we consider the engine cycle, which to me is what really matters, it is a two-stroke engine, although not a typical one. Imagine if only lawnmowers were as quiet and smooth as this small engine, called Rex. It has all the advantages of two-stroke engines, such as generating power in every second cycle, instead of every four cycles like in gasoline cars, resulting in a higher power output than a similarly sized four-stroke engine. However, it does not have most of the common disadvantages of two-stroke engines, such as high vibration and noise, toxic blue smoke, and that smell of unburned fuel every time it is started. This happens because, in a typical two-stroke engine, it is necessary to mix oil with gasoline during combustion, making them notoriously polluting. This begins to make sense now. The N engine has developed this new engine design with a clear intent to change the negative perception surrounding two-stroke engines. Imagine trying to convince an investor that your product is a two-stroke engine. This would immediately put you at a disadvantage. Nearly 90% of all fine particulate emissions from gasoline-powered landscaping equipment come from two-stroke engines, even though they represent only a fraction of modern landscaping equipment. The emissions are so significant that some studies have found that the pollution generated by a two-stroke leaf blower running for an hour is equivalent to a Toyota Camry traveling from Los Angeles to Denver. This might seem exaggerated, but modern cars, with their catalytic converters and other technologies, significantly reduce emissions compared to the almost insane burning of oil mixed with two-stroke gasoline. This is why the N engine wanted to distance itself from the two-stroke image. Analyzing the Innovative Engine Of all the designs I have analyzed, only one engine stood out as a suitable choice for a single-cycle engine, the Amper Amp SS prototype. This engine has only two cylinders in a boxer configuration, connected to a central crankshaft. The crankshaft's levers are unique and specifically designed to reduce vibration. What truly makes this engine considered a single-cycle is its piston and cylinder configuration. It's interesting to note that this design is the inverse of the N engine's opposed piston design. Instead of two pistons compressing against each other, moving in opposite directions, Amper chose to have the two pistons move together, back to back, within a dual chamber cylinder. I observed that each cylinder has two spark plugs and two sets of fuel lines because both sides of the cylinder function as combustion chambers. The engine operates as follows. 
while the power stroke on one side of the piston compresses the fuel air mixture on the other side of the same piston, you simultaneously get a power stroke and a compression stroke. Then, the second side begins its power stroke, helping to compress the fuel on the first side. The result is a power stroke with every single piston stroke, one pushing and the other pulling the crankshaft, much like pedaling a bicycle. When you observe each side of the cylinder separately, it appears to be a normal two-stroke cycle. But considering the piston as a whole, with both sides working, it behaves like a single-cycle engine. However, there is a clear difference between the Amper engine and the E-Rex, which we discussed earlier. The compact size of the E-Rex, its high power-to-weight ratio, and the almost inaudible sound make it an ideal candidate for an application that could revolutionize the EV industry. Revisiting the E-Rex Returning to the E-Rex, let's address some disadvantages. Like any engineering project, it involves a balance of trade-offs. The first challenge is that the opposed piston design concentrates heat in the center of the engine, requiring a rather complex cooling and lubrication system. Additionally, there is a performance issue. Although the engine offers more power and much smoother operation, its design has a significant flaw. It produces lower torque than other engines because it lacks a crankshaft, which acts as a lever multiplying the piston's force. They claim a torque of 180 foot-pounds or 244 newton meters, but they do not mention at what RPMs. I suspect that the torque at low RPMs is quite reduced since they tested an E-Rex in a Mazda Miata and demonstrated its operation but never showed the car starting from a standstill. If the promotional videos omit something, it might be an indication that it is not particularly fast. Another point that caught my attention was the claim that the engine would run on ambient air, while the Miata footage clearly shows a supercharger installed on the engine. This suggests that the air intake is getting some extra help, which leads me to question, why invest in an internal combustion engine? We know that the world is moving towards electric. Why still focus on developing an internal combustion engine when it is evident that electric vehicles are becoming the norm? It is like someone trying to design a more efficient horse-drawn carriage in the early 1920s when automobiles already dominated the market. And this brings us to why it is called the E-Rex. The E stands for electronic or electric, and Rex for range extender. They plan to build this as a range extender option for EVs. The idea is that with 5 or 10 gallons of gasoline, you could get that extra range when you need it most. Most of the time, you would not need to use it, but it would be available when necessary. This is interesting, and it is a concept I often reflect on. Seeing Tesla's Cybertruck with a range extender battery pack, which uses only additional batteries and not gasoline, made me think that this is a sensible approach. For example, a gallon of gasoline contains over 30 hours of stored energy, meaning a 10-gallon tank, weighing 60 pounds, stores 300 kilowatt-hours of energy. Of course, an internal combustion engine is only about one-third efficient, but even so, that represents 100 kilowatt-hours of energy, the same as the Cybertruck, which has a battery pack weighing a thousand pounds. Unfortunately, fuel is still very effective at storing energy for long distances. So, does this make sense? What do you think? Leave your comments below if you think a range extender plus EV is the right way to proceed. One thing I will state is that I will never buy a car again that has a gasoline engine moving the wheels. Gasoline engines are simply too slow, have very low torque at low RPMs, are really bad for starting, and require transmissions that are constantly shifting gears, which is not ideal. After driving an electric car, I definitely prefer a purely electric drivetrain. But would you be willing to consider a range extender option that finds its ideal RPM for the highest power output on the torque curve and just maintains that condition, generating electricity like a generator to recharge the battery, providing a quick recharge time if you need all the range you want? All this while still enjoying all the benefits of electric motors for high-speed performance and durable components? Leave your opinion below. I am really curious to know what you think.